What's going on? Move the Mouse back in City Skylines, the town of Springwood 2.0. I'm building on the base game map, Foggy Hills. We're doing a grid-based American city, loosely uh, inspired by San Francisco. It's a hilly map, so hilly city. Made sense. I don't know. And uh, last episode was the first episode that we didn't really focus on a particular milestone. We focused on growing the city to that milestone called Big City. What does Big City get us? A lot of big things. Uh, I don't know, maybe you told, could tell by the name. Uh, it got us a big building in the form of the university. It's education, and it's so important to one of the changes that we're going to be talking about today. So let's talk about what we unlocked. Oh, Big Town. Sorry. Big City. Big, big City's an Operation Ivy song. It, I had that in my brain. Um, if you're a fan, go give it a listen. If you're not a fan... Give it a listen, become a fan. Um, doesn't really matter. Anyways, the the bassist and the drummer, they later became rancid. So check out what they did before that. Operation Ivy. Okay. Big Town. Wait, is the Operation Ivy song called Big Town now? That's really going to bother me. Now I got to look it up. Big, big city. Big city. Big, no, it's got to be Big City. It's the, it's the, it's the chorus. Right? I'm checking. Hold on a second. Big town. It's not big town. It's big city, right? Big city. Okay. That's that's why I was thinking big city because it is the operation. I've Holy cow! I'm gonna edit this out, right? This didn't make the video, did it? Oi! If we if it did, we're in trouble. It's going to be one of those episodes. What do we unlock at Big Town? We unlocked a new area. We get nine of them total on console. That's it. So choose them wisely. We unlocked some taxation policies. Those actually start to do some really cool stuff. Um, Metro, really important. As our city grows, we want to come up with better and better ways to move people around. And Metro is a fantastic option for getting people off the roads altogether and getting them underground or on ground or above ground, thanks to the free update that came when uh, Sunset Harbor was released. Uh, but those last two features on ground and above ground, I don't think are possible on Switch, sorry. That is for PlayStation, Xbox, and PC. Uh, commercial specializations, leisure, kind of interesting. We can do education policies, all sorts of stuff. We'll talk through those. The big thing that we need to talk about today though is the, the zoning. Uh, university we dropped in, but we will talk about probably get incineration plant going unless we have requirements for filling up, uh, filling up dumps. I'll have to look at that before I, it doesn't matter. Let's, um, let's do this. So this, this neighborhood hasn't entirely filled out yet. So we, we can start moving some people out. And we're going to move them out this way um, by dezoning and then rezoning with high density. And I think we can do that all the way down here. We're going to move a bunch of people out. And that's totally fine. Um, Let's see. This probably would have been easier if I just used the fill tool, huh? Although it does break things up kind of different depending on where existing buildings are. It's kind of weird. So if I let this play at three times speed, we we'll start moving all those people out. Any residential demand that we have now is going to be met by any empty zone. So we'll still have little houses move in over here on this side of the highway, it seems. Um, what we'll notice over here is the buildings that move into these spaces. Let's uh, delete these little houses that are here. Yeah, now we're going to get these larger apartment buildings. Now, before too much of this moves in, let's pause. Let's go into. Got to think about this for a minute. Districts. Let's um, let's loosely paint a district. Had I not done this yet? Had I not drawn enough districts yet? I'm pretty sure I did draw in the. Um, in the tutorial, we'll come back to name things later on. But what I want to say is for any um, 
let's come in here. We'll go to the, the inspector tool or just click on it on PC. The inspector tool is your mouse on PC. Um, and you'll notice this little, uh, this little house icon we've got here. And we can say, what style? What style do we want these buildings to be? Well, let's turn on the style first of all. Second of all, default style is based on the map and our map defaults to European. If we want more of a North American style, we can select that. Now, um, you'll notice, let me show you a couple of these. I think a couple of these have built in. They're very repetitive. Um, they are, they're a very different style. Uh, you get these kind of T-shapes, you get these sloped roofs. Uh, we don't have any commercial of that variety yet, but it does look very different. This is much more modern. The European are just, it's a little bit older style uh, because the city centers and things like that were built up uh, longer ago. Think, think like um, Parisian architecture, think Amsterdam, right? There's a lot of uh, thinner Euro style row houses and businesses. And, and that's kind of what we got here. Um, so we made the zoning change and that moved people out. And now that we've done the uh, style change, there we go. That's going to move these people out. So we've really disrupted our, uh, our population recently. Unfortunately, things are moving in that don't belong here. What we're going to see start to move in is now going to be a, a more of a North American style, flatter top apartment building. And you can actually see that juxtaposition right here, right? You know, they get billboards on the, on the American one. Um, so there you go. Here's some different ones, right? Now, not that it's an issue just yet, but I want to interact with my district. I want to go to policies and I want to see if we have something under city planning. We don't have it yet. Reach a population of 11,000. So hopefully I will remember to check that out. One of the things we can do is high rise band buildings and why that's very useful is we want to step our city up to make it look a little bit more natural. So on the outskirts, we'll have, you know, the low density residential, we'll have, you know, some smaller commercial buildings, the larger commercial buildings, larger residential, and even larger as they level up. So by high rise banning, you prevent them from getting to that top level and you can create more of a tiered approach to your city, which if you look at the skyline of a lot of cities is going to be the case. There's going to be this large, really tall downtown financial district. Uh, and then everything else slopes down from there. And obviously as you get to the suburbs, it turns into much smaller um, apartment buildings and, and single family homes. So we'll be able to shape our city, but for the time being, we're going to try and move some people back in. Um, let's do this. We'll show you what the difference in commercial space looks like as well. So if we do a block here of high density, we'll do a couple blocks of high density commercial. Ooh, you know what? No high uh, office. Let's do that instead since we don't have any of that yet. Um, we'll talk education in just a moment. So we're going to eventually switch everybody over that we've moved in so far, but I don't want to move them all in at once. I want to do it very gradually, um, kind of a block at a time. And once this gets really filled and we've got demand again, then we'll move a bunch of people out and, uh, and rezone it. So uh, we've got a couple different zones, right? Green is where people live, single family home or apartment buildings. Blue is one of the places they can work, which is your commercial businesses. And those could be low or high density. And then the yellow bar in the bottom right is our industrial demand. And that can be met by two zones, industry, which pollutes an office, which does not. And this is a place for educated citizens to work. And it says right there, make sure you have a university. It's not a coincidence. Coincidence. It is not a coincidence that you unlock those at the same time. Uh, so let's look at our info views and education. We've got different tabs now for all the different forms of education that we have. So we're a little light over here. Let's drop in another elementary school. I don't think I did. I not have options for these before. Now that I've turned on the district styles, now I can pick and choose. 
So where is our, here, let's see. Here's one elementary school. This is a European style elementary. The Carl Heisenberg School. And then this is, uh, I guess, more of a North American style, as it were. So you've got some different options there. Uh, high school is another one. I don't think. Ooh, we do have enough demand for it. So I guess it's time to drop in another high school. Uh, and then we can take a look at the comparison of these two. So let's do this. Uh, pause. Road. Right through there. Perfect. And that should be plenty of room for our high school. Let's do that. We've got a little house here. So landscaping. Footpath right through here. Do we have space? We do. We've got space to bring this in behind the school. We'll bring it out further than we need to so that we can do that. It'd be awesome if I had that one more square. probably do it if we turn the school around. Do we have enough money for that? Yeah. We'll rotate the school around. Let's do that so that we can do this footpath. Just kind of cutting back through here, separating out the neighborhoods a little bit. We can, uh, we can put some trees and some sound dampening. Uh, this is the more North American style high school. In fact, it says high school right on it. Um, and then the kind of L shape here is the uh, the European style. I, not to say that it is a European style or that's a North American style. That's just the buildings that are there in those styles. I, just to be more specific. Um, university is the same way. So we've got that. We definitely don't have enough money to put in the, uh, the, the slightly different one here. The more, let's be honest, it's North American's more modern. Um, that was a quick turnaround. And then this last one is public libraries. We won't worry about that at all just yet, though it does provide an education boost. So we're seeing businesses get abandoned over here. Why? Well, that icon that's in the red tells us that this building is about to be abandoned next. And it's because there are not enough customers. So as more and more people move in, as more and more people have a need to come over here for work or as a, a cut through to get to their job, they'll be more likely to support these businesses. But for the time being, a little light so they're having uh, some issues there um we'll keep an eye on the demand for right now we're actually below where we got to in the last episode let's take a look at what else we want to talk about we could buy a new area we could talk about some of those policies for sure let me do that before i get into metro because i i'm sure i will easily forget about it um yeah let's talk Let's talk metros. And, and again, we've unlocked the ability to do um, all three at this point. I'll talk about them real quick. We'll probably stick to the, the underground because we're going very vanilla, which uh, is all you have access to, I believe, on the switch. So there are three types of metro stations. They all do the same thing. They connect trains. You can put lines, move people around. The benefit to the underground is that it is underground. It is getting people moving around, not on your roads. It's not interacting or intersecting with your roads at all, definitely the place where you want to get to. Now the above ground, or I'm sorry, the on ground looks really cool. And you can mix and match. I could have underground over here. It could come up to ground level and then go above ground. And you can do all three of those on the same metro line, the same tracks. Let's do our first line 100% underground. Let's try and get some people moving around. Let's think about where we want them moving. So we've already kind of got a bus line covering this street. So maybe what we could do is hook up near the bus line. Can we get? I'll take it. I will take it. I don't know. That's probably going to have to get moved later on. But for now, that's pretty, pretty good. Um, let's move in right next to. Is this a specialty building? I feel like this is the child health center it is okay so right next to that we'll put a stop slope too steep my that's ridiculous come on
Okay, we'll put it. We'll put it. We'll go across the street if it's too steep. If you're gonna be like that, how about that? We'll move a business out. Hope you feel good about yourself. Steep detection meter probably feels fine. I don't think it has feelings. Um, let's get in down. Heck, we'll do somewhere near the school. Uh, you may notice it rotating around. The the direction you drag is the direction the street it will attach to. So if I want it to attach left to right, I just have to move it, you know, to, to that. And I can get all the way to the corner, but if you move it up too much, it'll it'll rotate the other way around. So you can finesse it a little bit. Keep that in mind. Uh, I know wish that I move these things around just a little bit. Oh, should we get enough money to just move this real quick? One more. Let's just okay. We'll just be safe. Um, we'll move it back when we have lots more money. Okay, so now we've done the most basic of straight shot routes, right? That's not super beneficial yet, but we'll do a second line and you'll see it'll get uh, a little bit better. So I think by default it's trying to draw these metro tracks on road. Tunnels are more expensive. That's one benefit of building it on ground. Second most expensive is above ground. The most expensive is underground. You can see I'm already out of money. So we're gonna have to wait a little bit or take a loan. Pay a loan, take a loan. We have 75,000 in the bank right now. I need like 30,000 bucks to make that one tube though. So let's see here. We may not be able to, to afford this all right now. Underground is not cheap. So let's do it right. Let's come to here. We'll free form. Let's do that and we'll just see. It, it doesn't have to be perfect and I'm not gonna worry about finessing it too much. So what do we do with the line? Well, we can just, we can go and come back. We'll keep it super simple for right now. We're moving people and anytime we're moving people and giving them an option and they're not on the road, that is such a good thing for your city. It, Cause it frees up that road for traffic and firefighting and police and picking up bodies and all the other stuff that uh that needs to happen and in fact you know what traffic doesn't look too bad over here if you ask me it's looking it's looking pretty good so i can't complain about that rolling in dough why why are we rolling in dough i don't feel like i have that much money in the bank that that should even be a thing um okay so we're moving some people around what we will eventually do is decide on kind of a hub station i think central makes sense right um, so we'll look at where like the busier stops are and then we'll kind of fork a line off of there and have it run into this residential area and maybe have one that hooks up the coast and, and we'll have crazy lines going everywhere. Uh, basically just giving people options for going from point A to point B. They will hop lines. They will jump. Um, if we look at traffic, it would be really interesting to know we're at 92%. That's, that's pretty good. We're only at 8,000 people, so it better be good. But but just because we're at that few people doesn't mean that it is. Uh, don't feel bad if your traffic is worse. You probably have a couple problematic intersections. And once you fix those up or find little ways to get people to route other directions, even the very occasional truck, right, that comes this way instead is going to free up some space and some traffic over there. Um, also, we've got stoplights happening over here to break up specifically this traffic coming into the zone. It, it's still a little bit much for me. Like there's obviously way too much happening on this one main street. So we'll look at some ways to split it off and split it up. And, uh, you know, maybe we do some one way roads to keep things flowing. There's definitely some things we could do, but, uh, but we'll worry about that later. Let's see what we've got to worry about today. I think we've got to talk policies. And I think I said, I was going to do that first and, Man, did I go off on a tangent. So let's look at what we actually unlocked. So I don't talk about a bunch of things that we don't need to worry about. Education boost, really important. Um, tax raises and tax relief. 
I find it's not worth micromanaging things to that point. I just don't use those. We could look at industry 4.0. We should look at, we could look at incinerator plants, but I'm pretty sure I want to wait on that. Again, I think there's some, uh, some achievements or not achievements, some building unlocks. Uh, I do want to look at one thing, which is pollution. Man, look at that. First of all, I want, can you tell where our industrial area is? And two, can you tell uh, where in the river we start dumping our sewage? Look at that. Look at that. It's all the way out, all the way out to the ocean. Don't go swimming. Don't go swimming anywhere near Springwood, apparently. Um, hashtag joint task force. Yeah. Okay, boomer. Um, so policies. What's important at this point? Well, recycling is important. Right. Reduce your your trash, less trash in, less you have to process. Right now, we're just throwing it in the dump. We're not even doing anything fun with it, like burning it, which is just more pollution. Uh, Parks and Recs early on in your game can help raise land value. Once we unlock the Eden Project Monument in Endgame, probably want to turn that off. Uh, we turned on recreational use because we turned on education boost just now because it prioritizes education over working for young adults. More people are going to be interested in going to university, getting higher education. And as a result, working in the fancy office jobs, they're going to make up the bulk of our city. So that's going to be really useful. We'll stop basically with the industrial for quite a while, and we'll start focusing more and more on office growth anytime we have uh, that kind of demand. If you want to go the other way, if you want a more industrial heavy city, then you could say schools out. You could also do these policies on a district by district basis. Never do them both though. They are completely counterintuitive. Um, so tax raise for low for high. Um, when we go into policies, right? I'm sorry. When we go into economy and taxes, you can say low versus high tax rates so what's the point of managing from a policy i mean it's confusing um i don't i don't really understand why you would do things this way again you can do it on a district by district basis that that's why you would do that right um but it's it's more headache than it's worth in my opinion uh, we'll definitely be talking about some of the um I mean, we may as well turn encourage biking on nothing nothing gets hurt by doing that except the pedestrians that get hit uh in accidents we'll talk about old town as a use case for specific zones later on but not at all the point of uh, today's episode i do want to talk very briefly about industry 4.0 though that one's an, uh, an important one so with your industry i think i mentioned this earlier this episode but sometimes i forget just to be safe, uh, industry, less educated, uh, have more slots available for work. In fact, can we just, can we compare that real quick? We moved some offices in, didn't we? This block is offices. That's residents. These are offices. Okay. So what do we got? We got zero spots for uneducated. La three for educated, well-educated, highly educated. So that's not necessarily the best example, right? There aren't these haven't leveled up yet, so they don't have a lot of slots. But if we come over here to the industrial, right, there's lots of spots for uneducated and then zero for educated. There's well-educated people that are uh, underemployed. What I, I forget the terminology, right? Um, either way, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. There's, there's spots where if you're not focusing on education, focus on industry, it, it kind of balances out. But uh, we definitely want to focus more on the office jobs. Uh, the more I'm going to throw cinematic camera on for a minute because this is such an important point. It's so easy to misunderstand um, and underestimate the importance of education on so many facets of City Skylines life. So I always like to educate my citizens as best as possible, except in use cases, again, where I'm you know, trying to build up an industrial area at first. Maybe I'll go schools out for a little bit. But you want to educate because 
there's so many positive knock-on effects from educating your citizens. So the more educated they are, the better jobs they get, the happier they are, the more taxes they will pay because they're making more money. They'll buy more goods. They'll live longer. Um, they'll pollute less. They'll create less garbage. Just everything adds up to the point where if you really care about having, you know, a big efficient city, you need an educated workforce. It's really important. If you're going for more of an aesthetic approach, you can definitely go when the school's out, if you want to go industrial heavy, but it's much, I think, tougher to balance than going heavy the opposite way, than, than over going, than going overboard with your education. So just keep that in mind. I, I think education is so important, so misunderstood and under underestimated the importance of it. Um, so policies wise, we didn't really unlock anything too fun today, but there are a few things that we'll talk about later on. The uh, industry 4.0 piece is one that you definitely want to consider. It forces industrial workplaces for well and highly educated citizens. And you, you can see we're already, you know, employing some of those people already. Um, so that's definitely something that I think we will turn on a little bit but not quite yet, right? When we have more of an, an effect from the um, the citizens being pushed into education, like, you know, we only have 300 students here. They're not even finished their education yet. We just built this thing. So there aren't a lot of highly educated people in our town. Um, they've gone to high school. That's it. Now they're going to start going to university. And once they start coming out of there, then we can flip the switch on that industrial industry 4.0 policy and um, we, we legalized a long time ago. It was like five episodes ago. They have slow reaction time. Um, I know from experience. So also probably, probably explains a lot of the, the short-term memory problems and squirrel moments. But that aside, um, I think we're in a pretty good spot for today. I, I don't want to throw too much at you. I think it makes sense to compartmentalize a lot of these ideas. Uh, have some fun with it, right? Uh, our cities, our cities at this point are going to really start to grow. And in the next episode, rather than worry about milestone, I'm going to worry about stamping out some more high density residential, slowly replacing what we built up so far, because this very grid heavy part of the city that's also centralized to the map is going to be that big downtown area. And now we've unlocked ways to actually build those buildings. So hopefully you will tune in for the next one. You stayed tuned this long. I'm guessing you enjoyed it or you fell asleep. If it's the first one, likes, comments, shares, they all help so much and they're all so greatly appreciated. Subscribe if you're new and consider hitting the bell to get notifications for updates in this and other series. If you'd like to support the channel, links to that and lots of other things are in the description down below. But until the next one, when we'll build our way to that next milestone, again, we'll replace some of what we built up. We'll make everything taller, um, bigger, brighter, bolder, uh, other things that start with B. Until then, uh, this is Move the Mouse trying to th saying bye. Another that starts with B. Bye. See ya.